Depends on our possessing God's abundant grace and blessing. Though all earthly wealth depart, they who trust with faith unshaken by their God are not forsaken. And will keep a dauntless heart. He who to this day has fed me, And to many joys has led me, Is and ever shall be mine. He who ever gently schools me, He who daily guides and rules me, Will remain my help divine. Many spend their lives in fretting, over trifles and in getting things that have no solid ground. I shall strive to win a treasure that will bring me lasting pleasure and that now is seldom found. <clears throat> when with sorrow I am stricken, hope anew my heart will quicken. All my longing shall be still. To his loving kindness tender, soul and body I surrender. For on God alone I build. Well, he knows what best to grant me all the longing hopes that haunt me. Joy and sorrow have their day. I shall doubt his wisdom never, as God will so be it ever. I commit to him my way. If my days on earth he lengthen, God my weary soul will strengthen. 
All my trust in him I place. Earthly wealth is not abiding Like a stream away is gliding Safe I anchor in his grace Amen We rise and we join together in worship and praise Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we follow the order of divine service setting one, and you can find that on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and their praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. 
you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together the collect for the day. It's found printed on the on page two inside your worship bulletin. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. God. Our epistle lesson, which serves the basis for our meditation together this morning, comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia. But your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, we join together boldly confessing our faith in that triune God by speaking together the words of the Apostles' Creed. Those words are found printed for you on page 159. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated now for hymn number 940. Lord, 
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our almighty God, our all-loving God, our Heavenly Father, His one and only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. It is our prayer that He come to us this day, touching us, our hearts, our minds, our lives in Him, now and until life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the words of our text are, as I stated earlier, from the epistle lesson from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. But I really want to read verses 4 and 5 for you once again. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. So far our text, my dear friends in Christ Jesus, this is indeed a time of joy and celebration. Certainly it is our Friendship Sunday and, you know, the kind of silliness inside of me goes, aren't we friendly every Sunday? But we want to be able to honor those who have joined this past year amongst us and joined in our fellowship. We want to greet you and thank you and, and acknowledge that fellowship. We want to celebrate our friends in Christ, whether they be members of hope or all around us. Indeed, through Christ Jesus, we are unified in that one true faith. And that is the point of the Reformation, and this being the 500th anniversary of the posting of those 95 statements on the University Church in Wittenberg, Germany, by Martin Luther, stating how unequivocally God's word is the only source and norm, and that forgiveness is found only in Jesus Christ and Him alone not by any works on our part. But it didn't take Luther very long, really, to realize how important it was because, you see, the church was fine for quite a long time. Dr. Luther really did love the church. That's why he became a monk. Certainly some superstitious prayer, and he is a rare one who actually followed through with the prayer. You know, don't you ever make deals with God when things are going really badly for you? I do. I mean, Dr. Martin Luther was walking along in a very bad storm. Lightning came and struck a tree, and it scared out of him where he prayed to Saint Anne who is the patron saint of minors of which his father Hans was a minor that if he she would pray to God on his behalf and spare his life he would become a monk he was on the fast track for being a lawyer and very wealthy but he would willingly give it all up if you just saved his life. And indeed, his life was saved, not by St. Anne. He would later confess he knew that. But his word was his word, and he followed through, and he became a monk. I'm not sure any of us would follow through with any such deal. I can't tell you how many deals I've made because I'm a big wimp and a baby and I get sick and if I'm bowing down at the church of St. John <laughs> good I'm glad you're, you're right there with me good <laughs> means I'm vomiting in the toilet <laughs> bowing down at St. John get it? if you don't laugh you're, gonna, you're just not going to be confirmed that's better <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> no, I, and I make deals. Oh, Lord, please, if only you will make me better, then I will. I have to confess to you, I've not followed through with any of the I wills. I'm better, sort of, kind of. But I've not followed through. But Luther did follow through. And as, what a blessing that was, because you see... 
in 1505, which is when this happened, when he followed through and he studied and learned, what he did is he got the rare privilege that most people in the 16th century, 15th and 16th centuries, never got to look into the Word of God. He got to read it for himself. Up till that point, it was based on the Pope and the bishops and the cardinals to be able to give that very Word of God to the people. And they would say, you don't need to read it. You just need to believe us. And over many years, that word of God got twisted as it was spoken to the people. But he opened it up, and in the book of Romans is where he started to realize and say, it's by grace alone, through faith alone. Why don't we have scripture alone so that we know exactly what God's word, because men can twist it around. It's easy enough to do. Yeah, the year is 1521. 1521, and Dr. Martin Luther is in hiding for his life. He had to change his name to, the German translation's a little weak on this one. Either we call it Knight George or Prince George, and I think Knight George is a little bit more accurate. And if anybody follows us online and they speak German, they'll correct me, and that's fine. He grew a beard, he grew his hair out, and he was in hiding in Wartburg Castle. And in 11 weeks, he translated the New Testament. And the biggest challenge for Luther in 1521 in translating the New Testament in 11 weeks was, what language do I put it in? Because you've got to understand, there were so many German provinces and their own German was so different. So he picked the province that he lived, which was Saxony, and he translated. He translated in 11 weeks the entire New Testament, and he put it in Saxon German, which united the entire country of Germany. God's word alone, just by that action, in 11 short weeks, united the whole country of Germany when that New Testament got out, spread out amazing truly amazing and people got to see it with their own eyes exactly what God had said it was revolutionary and you see St. Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica a very good town in Greece and he says, because our gospel came to you, not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. Scripture alone, that word of God, we read it, we mark it, we learn it, we take it within ourselves, we mull it over, we read it some more so we get it, we understand it. Come on, you have to confess that even at our age, whatever that age may be, we're never too old or too young to learn something new. And I have to confess, every time I get to be in the Word of God and I get to open it up and I get to read it, I get to study for Bible class, oh my word, the things that we find out and we learn and we discover and we grow scripture alone and be careful not to be the one who says ah i don't need to read that it doesn't matter what we believe as long as we believe in something that's the dangers of the world and it's no wonder luther wanted to emphasize God's word alone. He was used to the world telling people what they wanted them to hear and taking that word of God and twisting it around and perverting it. I was told by my professor many years ago at seminary to never do what I'm going to do with you today. 
All right. So you, I'm just telling you that the learned doctors who taught me theology at the seminary to become a pastor told me I should never tell my people to go after a sermon and check out the words that I say. But I'm telling you, he is wrong, I'm right, and it's for your benefit. Don't take me at my word, even though I'm wearing this pretty white dress <laughs> behind this big, thick podium. You know why this is so big, don't you? It's harder to get to me here. <laughs> All right? I am telling you, check me out. And I've got to share with you the joys of what happens when people do that. I will get emails or texts or people will come and talk to me and say, you know, Pastor, I heard you say that. And they went back and said, that meant either I misspoke and they had to correct me or they didn't hear me right and we had to go through it again and straighten it out. But one way or another, we went back to a very important source that has all the final say. You know what that source is, right? If not, look in the bulletin under theme, sermon theme. Scripture alone. Sola Scriptura. Check me out. The words of Isaiah ring true to us today as they did to Cyrus. Thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped. That's his ruling hand. That's the authority hand. To subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and I will level the exalted places. See, it was easy for Cyrus to think he was going to wipe everyone out. It was easy to happen because history tells us that's exactly what he did. He wiped everyone out. And he chose not to listen to the Lord later on, and Isaiah had to remind him, you know what? I call you by name. I name you even though you don't know me. And it was the Lord. There is no God besides him. Would Cyrus know that without God? Without God's word? No. In fact, Cyrus got God's word and he still didn't know it because he refused to believe it. God's word reveals to us exactly who he is. Not what a movie says, not what books say, and dare I even go as far to say, and this is being recorded, even what Luther's catechism says, you can disregard wherever it goes against God's word. But I challenge you to find that. I do. I challenge you to find where it goes against God's word. And people will try. They'll argue about the modern times in this day and age, the way things are, and that it should be that way. They'll take a look at God's word and say, well, I think what he really means is. So in the Lutheran church, what we did is we built on what Luther said. That by grace alone, through faith alone, in scripture alone. We added that we let Scripture interpret Scripture. We let God's Word tell us what God's Word is saying, which is really helpful because I really, if you have any questions about what I say or what I mean, which you'll have a lot, ask me. Don't ask one another. Ask me. Because Susie will attest to the fact that I can be very confusing and she'll have to ask me not once not twice not three times many many times before finally I'll start to make sense and here it is 37 years and I'm still confusing her my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus 1521 Knight George was in Wartburg Castle and he saw how precious God's word was that he took it and he put it into the regular everyday language. When he came out of hiding, he discovered 
that the results of 1517's posting of those 95 statements, those 95 theses, resulted in a revolt. People were so angry when they discovered the truth of what the church was doing that they went out and they murdered thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. It's reported in one source more than 100,000 people were murdered. It brought Knight George out of hiding. He cleaned himself up. He shaved, trimmed his hair a bit, and he became Martin Luther once again. And he reminded them through the word of God that that's not what was okay by God. In fact, what God's word said was much of what the church had was really good, but they took it and they went another direction, just like these people took the words of Luther and went a whole nother direction. It's easy for them and for us to do that very fact. But I tell you the truth. We gather together in this place as often as we can around God's word, to read God's word, to study that word, to apply that word. And that word alone leads, guides, and rules within our hearts, our minds, and our lives. And it does not matter. It does not matter that the world may want to take any of this away from you. We can never, ever allow that to happen. This is a very important, special day for us. We get to celebrate as we say, Friendship Sunday, the relationships we have one another in Christ Jesus. This is also a very important day because it's the 10th anniversary of the Blind Mission. I don't know how aware any of you are that they meet here once a month and how pivotal we as a congregation are with that Blind Mission. But I want to share something with you how special this mission is for me. They invited me to be with them. Not only did they invite me to be with them, they invite me to eat with them. Not only do they invite me to eat with them, but they also invite me to share the word of God with them every single month. Do you know how miraculous that is in this day and age? Do you know how it is for people to come together, a group, a cause that brings people together, and because they don't want to possibly hurt or offend anyone, they take Christ out of the whole picture? But that's not true with this mission. They know that in their lot in life, with everything that they do, they call it a blind mission because, you see, not only do they want to receive that word of God, but they want to share it in their lives as well. And they've been doing that for 10 years. They want to hear that word of God to encourage and strengthen them. The same reason why we gather here in this place to encourage and strengthen us. Not to go from here and be scared, but to go from here, as Paul says, in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction as we receive the very gospel, the good news of a Savior who went against the norm of all of the rest of the world and it cost him his life where he had to suffer and he had to die and he had to rise again from the dead to secure total and complete forgiveness of all of your sins and of mine and of all the world. What a great news and message that is. That's even better news to all of you than Michigan losing yesterday. It is the greatest news of all that your sins are gone and you have heaven. That's our confidence and joy and you only know that through scripture alone. So who wouldn't want to be in that word? And who wouldn't want to celebrate this anniversary of a reformation? By grace alone, through faith alone, found in scripture alone. What a great foundation of our entire Christian lives. May God bless us in this journey, now and until life everlasting.
Amen. And now may that amazing grace of God and the peace that we draw from it, let it keep your hearts and your minds and your lives in him now and until life everlasting. Amen. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we lovingly, trustingly, and joyfully offer back to him the first fruit offerings of our hearts as well as of our hands. And Dario.
We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Almighty, all merciful God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this Sabbath day, a day of rest from our labors, a day of to rest in your word and amazing grace. For in your word we discover how much you love us and how you have won for us forgiveness of all of our sins and heaven itself. No one has done that for us, and we see it nowhere else but in your word alone. Please, Lord, guide us and bless us in that word. Keep us firm in that faith that we may grow closer to you and with each other. Build up your church here on earth that she may grow and flourish in your love and grace and that your amazing word may be the foundation of all who trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we humbly implore you as the great physician and healer to have mercy of those who are sick suffering lord give them help in the midst of their suffering in their grief we pray that you guide them and bless them hear their cries on their behalf be with especially keith safar tom grau diane guthridge preston tealman and kim dom be with rob langenberg Ann Ortman, Tanner Haberman, Kim Fales, Matt Legrand, and Josh Legrand. Be with Rich Steffens, Mary Bowes, Susan Utech, Sarah Hansen. Be with Beth, Ken Todd, Donna Singleton, Kathy Mast, and Pastor Jeff Walsh. Be with Marianne Lau, Arnold Awe, Howie Holenreed, Kimberly Christensen Bolke, Marv Hunt, and Philip Foster. Be with Lee Umlin, Justin Miller, Dalton Sherlock, Charlie Connect. Be with Mark Worth, Kinley Albrecht, and Donna Mae Murray. Guide them, bless them, and strengthen them, that they may find comfort in the midst of their distress and healing according to your will, Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we know that your ways are not our ways, but our faith is still in you. You are the Lord of life, for that's what your word shows us. We humbly implore you, O Lord, to have mercy on the family and friends of the people who, who drowned in the river this past week. Lord, we pray that you comfort all who grieve at this tragedy, but help them through the eyes of faith to look to you for their strength, their comfort, and healing, that through faith in you they can look forward to the resurrection and the reunion of all your saints. Give them the comfort that can be found only in you, Lord, in your mercy. And Almighty God, we humbly implore you to guide and defend your church here on earth, especially the pastors and people at Emmanuel Lutheran in Wakefield, Nebraska, Redeemer Lutheran in Dolan, South Dakota, at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Draper, South Dakota, St. John Lutheran Church in Emory, South Dakota, the entire Central Illinois District. Be with the faculty, the staff, and the students at Concordia University in Portland, Oregon as well as our brothers and sisters at the Western Presbyterian Church in Sioux City, Iowa, and the Tri-State Christian Church here in South Sioux City. Guide them and keep them firmly rooted in your word, that your name and the truth of that name may abound within them and among them and through them all. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We rise and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty, all-merciful God, our Heavenly Father, you are indeed the Lord of love. And we learn that we love because you first loved us. 
We thank you for the gift of marriage between husband and wife and reuniting Sam and Nicole Chernock in the bonds of holy marriage. Lord, we pray that you guide and bless this couple in your grace, that they build their lives together on and around you and your word, that your love may abound and forgiveness may reign supreme within this couple's lives. Guide them and bless them with wonderful years to come. Lord, in your mercy. The Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. 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 May be seated for him 549.
Please come back, worship with us again real soon. I want to give a special thank you to Dario for sharing his gift of, of song and music with us and singing in the service. And he'll be also um, playing in the fellowship hall, not during Bible class, <laughs> but afterwards during the meal. So Dario, thank you so very much for your willingness to be here with us and sharing God's word with us in song. We really appreciate it. Also, um, there is Bible class afterwards. It'll be shortened. Um, in fact, if you come, I'm going to give you two choices for Bible class today, and you can tell me what you'd like. But we're going to be taking a look at Exodus, or if you want some, some more about the Reformation and everything, I've got a video by Dr. Paul Meyer um, as he talks about it as he's on site and things like that. So we'll have that choice. Any other announcements, Laverne? Oh, she's not here. <laughs> she, I know she's here. I her uh, you locked her up. <laughs> 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 I know she's busy working in the kitchen. Uh, so, any other announcements, anybody? I know there was one. Somebody had something I was supposed to announce. I'm trying to remember what it was. Speak now. Tell me. What was it? Ah, that's what it was, but that's for later. So, okay, thank you. I was going to go crazy trying to remember. Thank you, Shirley. Sure, come back at 11. Come back anytime you want. Come back next Sunday. <laughs> There you go. Good. Have a nice day. In Jesus Christ, have a nice forever.